it's great to know in Singapore for the Human Rights Day that people are willing to come. I remember when living in Bayswater Road when I was a child, I had, uh, I would say, uh, a house, home help. I prefer to call it home help. Uh, and also a governess type of thing from Sri Lanka called Kodi Nona. I knew her very much and very closely for about till I was three. Then she went back to Sri Lanka, by that time Ceylon. And I then remember as a young person going back to Ceylon so many years later. And as I was in the garden with my cousins playing, uh, I must have been about 15 at that time. I found someone standing at the gate with a child in the, her arms. And she was looking. And I also wondered who she was. Then I went up. And uh, my cousin asked her, you know, what do you want in singular? And she looked at me and she said, Ronnie, I was really, really touched. Because she put her baby down and came and rushed and hugged me. Uh, that was many years ago. Sun Tzu really came from a very small area of China. Although they loomed so large in Singapore's image of what it is, and you can see that in heritage centres, and there were only a couple of thousand of them in all. Um, um, when the when it, women came here from China, they generally uh, came into a situation where there were there were either already women established uh, in Singapore in the area that became known as Chinatown, but wasn't then, or they came into the Samsung community, which already existed and had existed since uh, the middle years of the 19th century. So there was some kind of base where they had familiar institutions, people who spoke not just the same language, the same dialect, the same local dialect. Um, so there was a kind of support network of some kind. There was something familiar. And this isn't a position for, uh, well, hasn't been a position for all the domestic workers who come. They will often, they come to Singapore and are often put into a situation where they're isolated very quickly. Um, if they're not given time off, if they're not able to go out, for example, they will be uh, with people whose habits, whose customs and whose language may differ quite a lot from what they're used to. We, I, I led like a life of lies because when I was with my mother after giving birth, whenever we met friends, neighbors, you know, whoever, uh, we had to lie to say that my husband works overseas, okay, and things like that. And this went on for quite a while until my other relatives actually got fed up about it and they say she's not married. So until the point where they were like, she's not married, and then my mom said, oh, the husband's overseas. I was like, you know what? I'm not married. Because it's always struck me that, you know, while all this is going on, and the last, especially since 2004 and even before that, um, the government talks a lot about um, the low total fertility rate and how they need to have more babies and get more women to have more babies. But at the same time, when the babies come from mothers who are not married to the fathers of the babies, they put so many obstacles in their way. And, you know, you didn't um, really have a chance to touch on it, but we, we mentioned when we met that, um, you know, you're not entitled to the baby bonus, you're not entitled to any tax breaks, uh, no um, uh, reduction in maid levy, etc., etc. I mean, any of the perks that the government gives to married women with children is, is all entirely denied to you. And even maternity leave, if um, you don't fall under the Employment Act, uh, you don't even get maternity leave because uh, you don't get the extra third month for sure. And if you're employed in an executive or managerial or confidential position, you don't get maternity leave at all. I've been on my own for a very long while. So I really hope that the government can be more compassionate to really look into cases and understand how they can really help us from there. Uh, Singapore is a signatory to two international conventions and treaties. CEDAW, which is the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. And the second treaty is the Convention on the Rights of the Child. The CEDAW is actually the, the main bill of rights for women and it defines what constitutes discrimination and it obliges state parties to remove um, the discrimination and to educate the public. I'd like to share what I experienced so that maybe other people will benefit from knowing how I managed to, to reconnect and knowing my experiences and maybe one day it will inspire more people to follow uh, my path and hopefully uh, we will have a, a world, we will bring the world closer to world peace because people begin to accept each other's differences by understanding people like, like those with autism. Uh, thank you.
uh, the body is forming, but the head is away from the body. Okay, it's coming together. 